Hello students, today I am going to teach you nationalism in India part 4. In this part, I will discuss about the rebellion in the countryside and Swaraj in plantations. See this image. This is image of Baba Ram Chandra. He was leader of peasants of Avadh. Our Uttar Pradesh was known as Avadh in British period. He was born in 1864. He organized peasants and formed Avadh Kisan Sabha. He worked in Fiji as indentured liberal. Indentured liberal are those liberals who sign a contract for working in any institutions for a particular period of time like for 5 years, for 6 years, for 10 years, for a particular amount of money. They cannot break the contract in the mint. So, he was a indentured liberal in Fiji. When he returned from there, so he became trade union leader. He was against Begar. Begar is a very inhuman practice. In this, people take work from liberal without making any payment. If liberals refuse to work, so they are beaten mercilessly. So this was very inhuman practice and he was against this Begar practice and worked for rent reduction. In those days, Jamidari system was there. So Palukkedar and Jamidars, they were, they were taking the land from British government after paying a huge amount of money. After that, that land was given to different farmers in small pieces and for that Jamidars were entitled to extract taxes and that was known as rent. Jamidars and Talukedars were charging very high rent so he was working for the rent reduction also. He set up 300 branches of Avad Kisan Sabha in the villages around the Avad region. In our peasants were led by Baba Ramchandra, a sannyasi who had earlier been to Fiji as an indentured liberal. The movement here was against Talukkedar and landlords. These Talukkedar and landlords were Jamidars, you can see. So they were taking lands from the British government after paying a huge amount of money. And after that, they were giving this land to the peasants on rent and these landlords were demanding from peasants very high, very much high rent and a variety of other cases. Means not only rent farmers have to pay, they have to do a lot of other works and they have to pay a lot of other taxes also. Peasants had to do vegar and work at landlords farms without any payment. So some part of the land, these landlords were keeping for themselves, but they were not working by their own, in their own forms. They were calling the same peasants, they were forcing them to do work on their land without any payment. As tenant, they had no security of tenure, and peasants were also moved from one piece of land to other piece of land every year or every second year or every third year. They were not giving that land for 20 years, for 15 years. So security of tenure was not there. They did not know for how many much period this land will stay with them. And they were being regularly evicted so that they could acquire no right over the leased land. So regularly they were evicted from their land so that they may not say that I have worked here for 12 years, I have worked here for 15 years, I have worked here for 20 years, so this land is mine and nobody can remove me from, nobody can evict me from this land. So for opposition, when movement started, that was Naibandh Dhobibandh. Dhobibandh and Naibandh movement was started by panchayats to stop the services to landlords. 
the no nai will give hair cutting services to landlords and no dhobi will wash their clothes so many other services were also banned by panchayat so this was movement against talukedar and jamindars because people were very much angry with them so see peasants movement in our peasant movement demanded reduction of revenue already you know that revenue was very high so they wanted that revenue should be less abolition of begar so they they are not in the favor of begar practice and they wanted that this practice should be abolished and social boycott of oppressive landlords they landlords were very much oppressive towards them so they developed hatred in their hearts for oppressive landlords so they wanted that social boycott should be started for this oppressive landlords and in many places nai dhobi bans were organized by panchayats to deprive landlords of the services of even barbers and washermen in june 1920 jawaharlal nehru began going around the villages in awadh talking to the villagers and trying to understand their grievances as already you know that there was plan to start not cooperation movement at the very large scale in 1921 so far that work was started gandhi ji and ali brothers had started touring the all over india and jawaharlal nehru started touring the villages in awadh they jawaharlal nehru was going in the villages he was talking to the villagers and he was trying to understand what problems they are facing by october awadh kisan sabha was set up headed by jawaharlal nehru baba ramchandra and few others so by october awadh kisan sabha was set up and the head was was jawaharlal nehru baba ramchandra and few others within a month over 300 branches had been set up in the villages around this region the whole awadh region nearly 300 branches were set up in the villages so when the non cooperation movement began the following year the effort of congress was to integrate our peasant struggle into the wider struggle already you know that non cooperation movement gandhi ji wanted to make the non cooperation movement uh, a mass movement so it was being thought that this our peasants movement will also be included in non cooperation movement the peasant movement however developed in the forms that congress leadership was unhappy with but congress leadership's plan was there that they did will not break any law only they will start non cooperation they will stop giving all the services to british government and they will surrender all the titles given by british government only this was the plan they were not planning for spreading non violence or they were not in the favor to stop the payment of taxes so congress leadership did not like whatever way this peasant movement started as the movement spread in 1921 the houses of talukedar and merchants were attacked bazaars were looted and grains grain hoards grain was hoarded in godowns so those godowns were taken over in many places local leaders told peasants so they were these peasants were told by local leaders that gandhi ji had declared that no tax were to be paid there was no plan of gandhi ji gandhi ji never said that you don't pay taxes but local leaders told that gandhi ji says that you need not to pay taxes so these peasants stopped paying taxes it was also told to them that land will be redistributed among poor each and every poor will get some land and where the, he will not have to pay any such type of rent rent the name of the mahatma gandhi was being invoked to section all actions and aspiration so to come fulfill all the aspiration and to justify all the actions the name of mahatma gandhi was taken by all these peasants and their leaders every when they were going to loot talukedar merchants 
and bazaars so they were chanting the slogans mahatma gandhi ki jai kangrej samar rahe such type of slogans they were speaking at that time now i will tell you about the movement which was developed in the at gudem hills in andhra pradesh here also one leader was his name was aluri sitaram raju see this image this is the image of aluri sitaram raju he died at the age of 27 at this small age he was leading a very big movement of tribal people so we will read about aluri sitaram raju so aluri sitaram raju was born on july 4th 1897 in a village called maglu near bhimavaram in andhra pradesh he led tribals tribals are the people who earlier were living inside the forest and now their access has been denied by british government by reserving the forest the tribals were made to work as coolies for building roads were not even paid for their services the contractors who treat the tribals like slaves making them work hard not paying them beating them up mercilessly so this aluri sitaram raju taught them in guerrilla warfare guerrilla warfare it is a kind of war which is done by people in this they hide themselves behind the trees behind the hills near the roads and when british people or any people whom they want to attack they pass they jump from the trees they jump from the hill and they come out and they attack and they kill the officer officials or anybody whom they want to kill so this is known as guerrilla warfare and he taught them to combat against british government at the age of 27 years on may 7 1924 he was shot dead by a senior british officer gudan now how this movement spread in gudan hills so tribal people the tribal peasants interpreted uh, the message of mahatma gandhi and idea of swaraj in act and other way so see mahatma gandhi's plan was not non violent mahatma gandhi never said that you revolt against british people he never said that you kill british people his plan was only to non cooperate british government so that if british government will not make any profit they will leave india within a year this was the plan but every person was interpreting the message of mahatma gandhi in different way the meaning of the swaraj of mahatma gandhi was interpreted differently by different people as tribe as peasants of avat they thought that they need not to pay any taxes in the same way tribal people in gudem hills they wanted their access in forest they wanted that begar practice should be stopped for that they started violent struggle and it was not the dream of mahatma gandhi at all so tribal peasants interpreted the message of mahatma gandhi and idea of swaraj in yet and other way in gudem hills of andhra pradesh for instance a militant guerrilla movement spread in early 1920 not a form of struggle that congress could approve so this was also not that type of struggle which would be liked by congress here in the, um, here as in other forest region the colonial government had closed large forest areas preventing people from entering the forest to graze their cattle or to collect fuel wood and fruits this you have read in class 9th already and you know that forest were divided into reserve forest protected forest and village forest and in forest people were unable to enter they were stopped their entrance was stopped they were prepared prevented 
from entering in the forest. They were unable to graze their cattle there. They were unable to collect fuel wood there. So, due to this, their livelihood was affected. You have read it in detail. Due to this, this enraged the hill people. Not only were their livelihood affected, but they felt that their traditional rights were being denied. They were thinking that their forefathers were living in these forests. They were using these um, fuel wood and uh, forest produce and fruits. And now suddenly it has been stopped. So they were very much angry. When the government began forcing them to contribute beggar for the road building, the hill people revolted. The person who came to lead them was an interesting figure, Aluri Sitaram Raju. He claimed that he had a variety of special powers. He could make correct astrological prediction what would happen tomorrow, exactly what would happen tomorrow in anybody's life. He was able to tell the future. He was claiming this thing and he was claiming that if anybody has got injured, so by only touching him, he has power to, he had power to heal and he could survive even bullet shots and he was telling that no bullet was able to pass his body and he could walk in the bullet shots. Captivated by Raju, the rebels proclaimed that he was an incarnation of God. So, when Raju was speaking with these rebels, so they were quite impressed with him and they were thinking that he was incarnation of God, means God has taken birth in the form of Raju. Raju talked of the greatness of Mahatma Gandhi. So, Raju was impressed by Mahatma Gandhi, his greatness and his, he was inspired by non-cooperation movement also. He was, uh, he persuaded people to wear khadi and to give up drinking. But at the same time, he asserted that India could be liberated only by the use of force, not non-violence. But he did not like, he did not agree with Gandhiji. That, that by non-violence, British will go from India. So, according to him, British will leave India when we will be violent. Wherever we have seen British people, we will kill, then they will leave India. The Golden Rebels attacked police stations, attempted to kill British officials and carried on guerrilla warfare for achieving Suraj. Raju was captured and executed in 1924 and over time became a folk hero. So for all these, because he was leader, so he was captured and he was executed in 1924. And But his memory was not lost from the hearts of the people and he became folk hero for them. They were writing poems in his appreciation yeah, and they are singing the poem, so he became their hero. Swaraj in plantations. Now I will discuss about the Swaraj in plantations. In plantations in those days, in a large number of plantation workers were working and uh, uh, there was one Inland Immigration Act passed in 1859. According to it, the plantation workers were not having any right to leave plantation tea gardens without the permission of the owner of the tea garden. But when they were asking for the permission, very rarely this permission was provided. So when they listened about the non-cooperation movement, about the Swaraj of Mahatma Gandhi, so they interpreted it very differently. For them, the meaning of Swaraj was freedom to move. What was the meaning? Right to move freely in and out of the confined space in which they were enclosed. They were enclosed in confined space. From there, they were not allowed to go anywhere. So, the meaning of Swaraj for them was to move freely in and out. Whenever you want to go inside the plantation, you can go. Whenever you want to go outside the, of the plantation, you have right to go. So that was the meaning of Swaraj for them. They were also thinking that 
Now, if Swaraj comes, so they will get chance to go to their villages and in villages they will get land also. When they heard of non-cooperation movement, thousands of workers defied the authorities. They thought, now Swaraj has come, Gandhiji has come, now nobody can force them to stay inside the uh, plantations. So when authorities set them to stay inside the partition, uh, plantation, they defied. They refused and left the plantations and headed home. But they never reached to their home. Because they reached to railway stations and to ports so that they can board railways or railway or a steamer to reach to their villages. But there was a strike due to that rails and steamers, they were not running. So they were cut by police on the port and railway stations and after that brutally they were beaten up. The vision of these movements were not defined by Congress program. When Congress made program of non-cooperation movement with Ali brothers and in Congress meeting they discussed at that time their program was not any such kind of program. It was non-violent program and in this only non-cooperation was to be started. They interpreted the term of Sarat in their own way. But meaning of Sarat was interpreted by different different people, by different different Ways. For them, meaning of Swaraj was to the end of suffering, end of all the troubles which they are suffering under. So they interpreted the term Swaraj in their own way, imagining it will be a time when all suffering and all troubles would be over. Yet, when the tribals chanted Gandhiji's name, so when they were going, they were they started for steamers, they started for railway stations, they left the pearl plantations. At that time, they also were saying the different slogans, Mahatma Gandhi ki jaye, Bharat Satantra karo, such type of slogans, they were speaking loudly and they were also emotionally related to an all Indian they were also emotionally relating to an All India agitation. When they acted in the name of Mahatma Gandhi or linked their movement to that of Congress, they were identified with a movement which went beyond the limits of their beyond the limits of their immediate locality. So when they were talking about this movement, so they were linking their movement with non-cooperation movement, which was spread across India. So their movement also went across their immediate locality. So how this non-cooperation movement called off? So see, at Chauri Chora in Gorakhpur, when peaceful demonstration was going on in Bajar, police people attacked on that demonstration. Then the people in the demonstration were enraged and there, that was, there was violent clash between police and those people. And after that, these demonstrators burned the police station in which many, many police officers and constables was, were burnt alive. So when Mahatma Gandhi listened about this, about this incident, so he called the non-cooperation movement off just after this event. He called off the movement. See Chori Chola. This is the place in Uttar Pradesh, in Gorakhpur. So you have to learn this place. It is very important. Now, now read each and every line from the chapter if any problem you face, you can talk me on WhatsApp group or you can me or you can make me a phone call. Thank you.